about parks and fun and home, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and what it's all about. So that's so I'm just not uh, uh, um, just not be so pity about it. Um, so for you all are new here and probably a lot of uh, European people are are just uh, walk up and, and uh, store, start their um, uh, computer and, and joining us here. So we are uh, doing this uh, 24 hours uh, uh, Jane Beyond this year because we cannot go to Lisbon. Um, what is really, really sad um, for, for me and for all of us, well, then we cannot really, really be in person together and, and um, um, share thoughts about Joomla, uh, thoughts about life, thoughts about beer. Um, and um, that's really bad. And I really, really be a big fan of Lisbon, um, one of my favorite cities. Um, and um, so we're doing this um, in 24 hours live here around the world. And um, if you want to support us a little bit, you know we we had this we had this um, uh, conference set up in in uh, Lisbon, and uh, it was not really nice from the financial part. But we have a, a, a small donation button on our website, uh, and if you want to click on this and uh, donate something for us, uh, that would be nice and help us to um, to go over this. Um, bad times also from a financial part of you. So who will, uh, as I said, who will talk about Bucks Fun at Home, what it's all about. Um, as we talked about this presentation, he said he will not really take so much time, um, uh, but he promised me that if he didn't, uh, if he don't need so much time, he will um, uh, put on his tap shoes and uh, present something on this uh, area. Um, so we will see how it goes. So Phil. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. So I've got to go over my time so that I don't have to do any tap dance. Um, so, so you want to know about bugs and fun at home? Well, start off. Um, I'm Phil Wharton. Um, I run the London uh, Joomla user group. Um, I'm the CMS release team lead, which I'll come on to a little bit later. And um, also, with all presentations, we have to really have some pictures of cats. Um, and so this is my situation at the moment. With COVID, we're all locked in. Um, it's a household of seven, if you include me. Um, and this is my cat stack as opposed to my lamp stack. Sorry. This is Flo. She's a chaos agent. Um, the only cat, only cats have the ability and the agility to find all those undocumented key combinations that leave your laptop unusable and in another language. Um, and this is where she is a keyboard and a mouse lock all at once. I think the caption for this should be, you tap too loud, let me sleep. But she's grown up. Um, she's now a big cat that sits in front of the screens and totally blocks everything. Um, and when she's not doing sleep, uh, she's ripping pieces of paper to pieces. So this is the problem with this household at the moment. When there was a toilet roll sh shortage, this is what I came down to one morning. Um, so not the best uh, please day for me. Um, I'm also a rower. Uh, I row um, a lot on the Thames. Um, and this is part of the Great River Race a couple of years ago. Um, we came 11th out of 350, so I was particularly pleased. It's a 21 mile race that's all the way through the centre of London. And I'm the one at the back hair drying the team, called a cox, it's a technical term. Um, and there's plenty of other technical terms that I'm called while I'm doing that. Uh, usually that I wasn't looking where I was going, we bashed into something. Um, I think in this particular one, I was shouting at the guy at the front to move because otherwise I was gonna be in the very wet part of the boat. And this is my local, um, which is at the moment shut along with everything else. Um, we're about to open up the UK a little bit more, but unfortunately the pubs won't. Um, this little pub is, is literally six minutes walk from mine, as is the Thames. 
and uh, it's uh, often, unfortunately, it won um, best micro in the country, well, in, in the in the county, um, the day that we had the lockdown. But anyway, enough of silly pictures of cats and stuff. Um, Joomla obviously has much more sensible pictures. So bugs and fun at home. Um, what is it all about? Well, we started the initiative. It was actually Nico who's, who actually uh, brought the subject up in a production meeting that as uh, a lot of countries had been locked down and it seemed like it was going to be quite a long uh, lockdown, that it might be an idea to start some initiative to try and tap into some of the enthusiasm of people who were stuck at home and see if they could help out with the project. Um, and we're all pretty busy actually in production. And so the question was asked, would anyone volunteer? And I had this cough brewing and was trying to stay silent, coughed at the wrong moment. And Marco decided that that was an indication that I would love to do the job. So it was decided that um, I would look into it and see what we could come up with. And of course, we start with a really catchy name, which was Pizza Bugs and Fun, but without the pizza. Um, that was my idea. Um, and luckily, other people uh, got involved and they, it got uh, morphed the following week to Bugs and Fun at Home. But it started um, back in April. Um, and the idea was to try and say, tap into that enthusiasm of people that were at home at the keyboard. Um, starting to feel a bit more the isolation and maybe we should do something online where people could um, share, come together and just build more of a community. So it has evolved quite a lot. It's been two months. Um, I've been doing it every Saturday uh, from this time. Um, so uh, five o'clock uh, UTC, which is uh, six um, in the UK. Um, been getting up and getting ready for it. And we roll all the way through to um, around about six o'clock in the evening. That was originally. Um, that's actually been extended out now because more people have got involved. And so it actually starts the Friday night for me where I, I open the chat room and we I hand that over to America, to the West Coast. That then gets handed on to Australia. I think Patrick's already done the talk this morning. So he then takes over the uh, admin of the room and then when they finished in uh, Australia, being a, a reasonable time and I've awake enough, it's handed back to me. I go through Europe and then we hand it over to America if we can at the end. So it's 24 hours where we've got a chat room open where there's people around and we're all kind of working on different things, but you can come in and, and talk. But I'll go a little bit more into that uh, later and um, what all the areas are. So. We've based it on um, something that was done in Pizza Bugs and Fun, um, which is there's three main areas of what you can do. Uh, there's an Explorer tab, um, which is a series of documentations. Um, so all the things that need to be documented and all the things that need to be translated. And obviously with a new version of Joomla coming up, uh, there's a lot of new stuff to write, uh, stuff to do with uh, trans uh, the translations have all got to be um, prepared as well. But we've also got a lot of documentation to do for how you'd go from Joomla to five to three, now it's three to four. So the migration process, and that all has to be worked through and written up and then translated into all different languages. There's also an adventurer tab, um, and this is where we're doing uh, patch testing. So, and, and this is a key thing that really uh, needs help, which I'll come on to a little bit more later, where by all of the patches that uh, people have written, they need at least two people to test them. And they need to go through the uh, test environment that's been set up by the person that's done it and report back whether or not it uh, meets the requirements and does what the patch says or whether it fails for some reason and then give some feedback. 
And the final tab that we, we had on the original one when we started was the Conqueror, which is, this is where we're encouraging people to do pull requests. Um, and so there's all those little bits of the software that have still yet to be written, all the bits of the software that um, need a little bit more inspiration, um, maybe another uh, look at. So it's trying to encourage people to um, put their skills to writing some code, um, doing a pull request, and just adding a little bit more to the, to the Joomla ecosphere. And then we had a resources tab, and that has really grown. So the resources tab is all those key areas that will help you in a journey. Now, when we started this, um, it was, didn't really have much of an idea of where it would go. Um, just basically keeping a chat room open, seeing if people would come along. But actually quite quickly, so several communities grew. Um, and we realized that there was lots of different areas that needed help, lots of different areas that needed support. And, and lots of things that we could do with this time, the, the Saturday mornings, the bugs and fun at home time. And so just a little bit of, is it just another pizza, bugs and fun? Well, no, it's not. Um, first of all, there is no pizza as the original name indicated, much to the horror of quite a few people that have turned up. Um, it's obviously online only because at this lockdown period we can't meet and I think one of the great things about the pizza bugs and fun events and I've taken part in, with them in the past is where you are getting people coming to all get together share ideas work through those problems together it's very different when it's all online to get a, a community together but actually it is starting to develop there's the regular faces that will turn up I've worked out who has the different skill levels, so who to signpost people to. I think that is what I'm hoping to evolve with these sessions. Um, it's also a lot more about teaching. I think this is the one thing that's come through in that there are a lot of people out there who would really love to help, um, but they don't have necessarily the skills or the uh, the setups to be able to do exactly what we need. And over time, Joomla itself has become much more professional in the way that it's built. You know, we've all migrated from Notepad um, all the way through to proper IDEs. And so a lot of people need to be on the same page. And I think there's a one of the things that I'd really like to put more into these sessions is trying to actually bring people the skills and the tools they need to help build Joomla. Um, off topic, I put, yeah, it's great. When you've got a whole day um, dedicated to just kind of doing this sort of thing, there are quite a lot of off topic things. You know, um, people bring up uh, code that they've been using for work, things that they've seen. So it is a lot more relaxed than it would be in, say, a, a pizza box and fun where you focus just for that day getting as much done as possible. You will be coming back the next weekend, probably dipping in, dipping out. So it's it's actually not, uh, it's much more relaxed. And so you can bring up other topics. And I've learned loads and been able to help out others um, with various bits of coding, which has been great. And, and I think that helps build up the, uh, the atmosphere in the chat rooms um, that you know it's not just there to do the grind but you can talk about other things um, and not area centric yeah so we we don't have to just focus on on the bugs that are in front of us um, I've um, wandered through the documents and spent quite a bit of time recently doing a lot of the documents which i've enjoyed um, and also looking through all those documents you learn so many other things so it, it's you can actually have a good ramble through various aspects of this in the in the bugs and fun at home sessions and there are people there to help you so it's a broad mix of people and this is one of the things that i've really enjoyed um, there's become several communities so there's an Italian community that really uh, seems to have kicked off with quite a few uh, Italians all meeting and then going off and having their own rooms. They start off in the main central room, um, 
spring up a new room so they can talk just in Italian and off they go. Um, and then they'll dip back into the main room if they've got a question that they need to ask everybody else. So this is one of the things I'd really like to see is that, you know, there's a main central room where people can come and talk and say hi and ask what needs doing and then break out into other rooms use the technology it's evolving zoom itself we've been using quite a lot for this has evolved um, they've had a lot of bug fixes we were gate crashed several times in the early sessions doesn't seem to happen at all now so you know there has been a lot of um, evolution of the technology that we're using and it can only really get better so i think i can see more in the future if we can grow this and do more and more on the saturdays We'll have more rooms with more um, groups going off and doing their thing, but coming back to the central group just to check in and and and, and be sociable. Um, it also has the potential to be a piece of bugs and fun feed, and I'm really hoping that you know if we can get this pandemic down to a level where we can travel again safely, that we could have a, another pizza bugs and fun, and by doing these bugs and fun at home sessions we have trained up a lot of the people um, so that the sessions when they actually do happen will be a lot more productive uh, in the past i know uh, talking to benjamin and um, uh, i've uh, i've actually known benjamin all the way through the last piece of bugs and fun talking about it in fact i offered to translate the original site from german to english if he did a pizza bugs and fun and i think that was a very unwise yes that he said wholeheartedly thinking i wouldn't do it um and lo and behold we had the last pizza bugs and fun um so i think and, and one of the things that he really stressed in the build-up to that was to make the day a success, there's a lot of time that needs to be dedicated beforehand to training people, making sure their computers work, that they're set up in the correct way. So I see the pizza bugs and fun is a constant um, improvement on people's sets, setups and learning so that we can actually document the best way to set up the machines so that when these sessions actually do happen, they're very productive and a lot gets done. I'd also like um, the Bugs and Fun at Home sessions to change some of the culture, to make it feel much more inclusive. Uh, all software goes through periods, or any any large group will go through periods. Um, Joomla, I remember, in the early days, was was had a very different structure and setup, uh, and it's evolved and it's found its way. And there've been some good things, some things just don't work, and you get people coming in and people going out and the culture changes and I, I think one thing that needs to be pushed over the line is a very inclusive culture whereby on the Saturday Bugs and Fun at Home sessions anyone can turn up it doesn't matter how skilled you are if you've got a, some enthusiasm to help out to get to know to understand then it should be welcomed and embraced and no one should feel that there are any silly questions that are being asked um, you know, some of the software forums can be quite hostile um, if you ask a question that's already been asked. But everybody's new to the subject at some point. And I'd really like these sessions to be very embracing and welcoming of those who are new to doing production software, new to some of the skills and the, the things that they need. And so we should be embracing that teaching and then hoping that they will go on to teach themselves um also not just Joomla centric it's while doing these sessions over the last two months i've realized that a lot of the things that we're teaching would actually help a lot of other cms's and i've done quite a lot of websites in my company for charities um i also my biggest client at the moment is the uk police but um with the charities they often need help to understand how to do the software but sometimes they want to carry on and develop some of the software themselves and they need help and these sessions um, really would help that sort of person so it could be open to more than just the tight Joomla community it could be other people that want to help and learn and understand and I will come on to a little bit more of uh, what I mean 
uh, in a moment on that one. Um, and also helping out other CMSs as well. Um, I put it here, the attitude and atmosphere have to be positively set. And that is something that's come about from a couple of conversations over the last two months. Um, people saying it's really nice and refreshing to come somewhere um, where the, they can really just ask any question. It's much more, oh, let me show you this, let me show you that. Um, and they've made the comment that it's, it's a bit like the earlier days of, of any big project like Joomla, whereby it was a small team of people getting together with enthusiasm doing something. And that's a lovely attitude and atmosphere to, to, to kindle and to hopefully continue. So, and it's something that I've really, through the Joomla leadership talks, um, some things were identified. And one of the things that struck me is you actually have to make a positive decision to have a good attitude and, and to set the tone in any organization and any sessions that you do online. I run the London Joomla user group um, and, you know, we get uh, international speakers come along each month. Uh, now it's all online, but there, you know, it is, it is what the organizers decide will change the flavor of the evening. So if we decide to go very tech heavy, that could be very, um, isolating for someone who's just turned up and, and really doesn't really know anything about coding. Um, but if you do a very general talk um, and you're not talking code, then some of those that are hungry to learn more about code could go away uh, disappointed. So is this the attitude and also the, the expectation levels have to be set. And it's something that's kind of come to the fore in London. And I've been thinking about with bugs and fun at home sessions that we do need to set the atmosphere and the attitude and to get it out there that you know if uh, you've been snarled up by someone in the past it's not going to happen here um, and so you can turn up you can ask your questions we will find someone that will guide you through and help you to skill up I mean we're all into open source um, open source software it's a passion I've had for many many years um, many people in the community it's it's you know one of the main things that they're really passionate about um, and I think this should really also be open to all um, all skill sets so there's a lot of people that say oh I don't know if I can join these sessions because I don't know how to code so like, well can you write a document uh, yeah sure well I don't actually know how to use the document um, wiki how, how do I do that well if I show you would you be happy to write this documentation? Yeah, not a problem. And off they've gone. Um, and it can be, you know, some people say, you know, they're, they're, they're more into graphics and that. What can they do? Well, we need loads of screenshots taken. We need loads of um, graphics done. So there's lots of different skills that we need to finish a lot of the documentation for Joomla. And there's always going to be some job out there um, that's just right for whoever turns up. So all levels need to be catered for. Um, and I hope these meetings will evolve, we'll get more structure to them, and we will be able to, as people come, fit them all into the specific area that will really suit them to get the most from everybody. Um, now, the things that I've really identified that we need to really focus on is um, teaching the test environment. So a lot of people have jumped into these sessions and also when we were doing the pizza bugs and fun main sessions people come at Jim London and say um, I don't know how to test I've never done it before what do you do and they'll come with their Mac they'll come with a Windows laptop um, it could be Linux and so what, one of the things that we've been focusing on in the first few months is looking at uh, the documentation the test environments and actually going through and, and testing the test environment documentation uh, and setting stuff up. And that's been quite an eye opener. Some of them, the tutorials, um, there's a lot of them spread about and a lot of them just don't work anymore because things have changed. Um, some of the screenshots were versions of PHP that we no longer support. So we've been going through updating those actually going through the process to make sure that the setups work because there's nothing more frustrating if you're new to a subject new to to um, having your own 
lamp stack on your laptop to be going through a tutorial and getting to that point where it just doesn't work um, and just being left and not knowing what to do. So the bugs and fun at home, the chat room, although it's not always a lot of chat going on, there's always an area there that you can go just come into and go, I've got to this documentation, this is where I am, it just doesn't work. Um, and then someone else can look at it and explain perhaps there's a misinterpretation or no documentation is actually not very clear here or just wrong and we need to fix this it's changed since this was written so people actually just going through and doing this process is brilliant because it's it's taking off these rough edges where the documents weren't quite right and hopefully it'll be a much easier journey in the future for a lot more people um, we've got to set up IDE environments for people and so I remember going to uh, a talk in Barcelona at the at JAB oh, that was like three years ago at least um, and it was a PHP Storm um, session and really really interesting I learned so much from that um, it was uh, inspirational in pushing me over into using that IDE um, and moving away from from the setup that I had had up until then um, and so I think the the integrated development environments um, they're kind of the place that we do so much of our work when we're coding and yet I, I've, I always wonder if there's a better way to set it up and I've been finding out there are so many different people with so many different setups out there and some of them are just better than what I've got so these sessions have really helped me to um, start to drill down on what would be a better way to set up my own working environment and I think that again could spread out and, and really help um, the community and help people and if we can document that and document a few ways that things are set up that seem to really work for the Joomla project that will help um, a lot so we've also got to teach github and um, git now in the last few days, I wrote an article, which I've, I've got a little slide of uh, a little later. Um, and from that, we had several volunteers come forward saying, I would actually love to help um, do some more testing for Joomla and get involved in the community. And within a few minutes, they went, oh, I don't use GitHub at work. Um, I've been coding for years, small one man band or whatever. I don't need GitHub. And so there are a lot of people out there who are isolated uh, individual programmers actually really good really skilled in the way that they work but they don't have the github setup so i think this is one of the um, documents i've been working on the last few weeks and i hope to get it finished uh, this weekend is going through doing um, a github uh, and patrick also who spoke earlier he's been doing a lot of documentation on this and um, working with him really want to go through the whole process so that we can identify a really good setup for people that are using Joomla that might be isolated, they don't use it at work, um, do some videos and some simple tutorials on those. So you're not sitting there thinking, I've got to learn this all on my own, but actually there's some videos, there's some tutorials that work, they're up to date with update screenshots and a chat room or two out there where you can just dip in on a Saturday and say this is how far I've got not sure about the next bit is this correct uh, and can we test this out so that's one of the things that um, we're doing at the moment patch tester now patch tester has come on um, and is it is just developing all the time um, and it's really great to see that um, and Roland's um, been absolutely awesome. Of uh, It was actually his talk in Barcelona that I saw about the um, PHP Storm. And he's been absolutely brilliant at um, fixing any of the little bugs we found with the patch tester um, there and then on the Saturdays to allow us to continue to use it and just to keep pushing that project forward. So patch tester, we've got to explain to people what it is, how to use it, um, how to set it up on their machine. And, and, and how to go through all of that. And, and also the issue, track, issue tracker. If you've never um, reported an issue and it's your first time, it could be a little bit daunting to know, am I putting it in the right repository? What is a repository? Um, 
you know, we want people who just have enthusiasm to come on board. And if they have to learn a whole language straight off and speak that language fluently right from the start, it can be quite off-putting. So again, the Bugs and Fun at Home is designed for people to come, ask those awkward questions, first-time questions, newbie questions, and get a positive answer back and just feel, yeah, I'm at home here. I will learn here. This is a great place to learn. The um, testing environments, we need to make sure that they work for not only Windows, but Mac and Linux um, on localhost on a server. Now, I, I have uh, over 150 sites that I look after. I've got a lot of servers. So I can do a lot of my testing on, on some of my older servers and just spin up lots of um, environments. Um, and that's great for me, but not everybody has lots of servers sitting around. So, um, you know, localhost is where most people um, learn to do testing. So we need documentation for those that actually would do some testing on the server um, and also those that will be setting up a localhost environment. Um, we need to keep constantly checking the docs work. Um, and so, you know, when you read a doc and you get to a bit and you think, I don't really understand this. Bugs and Fun at Home is a place to come on a Saturday and say, hi, am I getting this right or wrong? Could it be the document's wrong? And if the document's wrong and others go, yeah, actually, it doesn't make sense. Just go in and edit it. Um, fix it for the next person. Um, as I mentioned, the IDEs, um, so there's going to be two that we really focus on trying to get the documentation for. PHP Storm, um, which the project has licenses for, uh, which is great and we're supported by them. Um, and also Visual Studio Code seems to be uh, an idea that a lot are enjoying and getting involved in. And so I've identified two people who have both said that they'll write up uh, really good tutorials um, that will explain how to use those and setups that will help you with the testing of Joomla. So I'm really looking forward to testing those out over the, the next coming months. Um, I use PHP Storm. I've dabbled a little bit with Visual Studio Code, but really looking forward to seeing which one, uh, the pros and cons of both. But I think we focus on these. In the docs in the past, we've had loads of different IDEs. Um, and I know IDEs come and go. But I think for someone who's new to a subject, they just want to know what's the best one. And so I think focusing on two and the setups for two is as much as we really need to focus on. Um, others will have their, their favorites. Um, I remember Benjamin, I, I made him the, uh, I said, you know, I'll help out with pizza bugs and fun if you help me with my PHP Storm documentation, assuming that he used it. And of course he used a totally different IDE um, on a totally different machine. And, and this is part of the challenge that everybody is doing things different ways. Um, but we do definitely need to document a few common ones and make sure that it's really well documented and kept up to date. Uh, I mentioned about the Git and GitHub. Um, I say, a couple of volunteers only the other day came in and, and said exactly that. They don't ever use Git. They don't ever use GitHub. Um, I don't use Git on all my projects because I don't need to. I'm using PHP Storm. It has local um, history and absolutely brilliant. I very rarely need to use it. And when I do, it's been an absolute lifesaver. But I also have been um, doing the tutorials on Git and GitHub um, and using my lack of knowledge to go through and see what needs to be put into these from someone who's coming at it new. So now I'm not new, I need more new people to test it, to test the documentation in the next couple of weeks when it's finished. So anyone out there who isn't familiar with Git and GitHub, who would love to actually uh, learn, um, please do contact me. Um, I'll be giving the details out, my details out again at the end, and you can help test the documentation. We can do some screen sharing, and um, that will really help other people that are coming along to have a, a smooth journey into using those technologies. Um, and there are so many setups and best ways. Uh, I was speaking to Nicola only the other week um, in uh, the Bugs and Fun at Home session about his setup and how we do it. Um, if you were halfway through a project and decided to 
bring that in um, because a lot of tutorials start with the premise that you've got a clean sheet and a clean um, project and you're just about to start and often that's not actually reality reality is you're doing something and then you start getting into using a particular tool and you need to adapt that tool to your situation in real life um, patch tester uh, mentioned a little bit uh, Roland um, as I say has been doing some fantastic work improving that um, it's a evolving piece of kit and I've, I've got some ideas which I did mention to him uh, the other week um, um, been working with Tobias on things that we could do to improve it and help those that are doing the patch testing to have a, a better experience and hopefully make the whole process a little bit more streamlined. Um, it's also an excellent, if you get into the patch testing, it's an excellent way to learn about features because you'll be asked to test stuff. You might go, I never knew Joomla had that. And that has been one of the things that's really hit me of, uh, I didn't even know. In fact, I've actually been there when George, who obviously is doing J4 and has done a lot with J3, he's looked at me and gone, I don't know what that does. I didn't know Joomla did that. Um, Joomla is so much more than just one person. It's just a whole collection. And there's so many little treasures to find in it. Um, and, you know, I sometimes look at the screen and think, there's something new about this. Uh, oh yeah, um, so it's it's great, and 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 the patch testing is one way to find out stuff that's being fixed, but also put into to Joomla um, and be at the the forefront of learning about that. Um, and it's a great way to get into coding. You know, you don't have to, depending on the patches that you choose, but some of the patches will need a little bit of looking at the code, and it's a great way to start getting into a more deep deeper knowledge and understanding of code and going, oh, I can see why they've done it like that. That's, that's really interesting. Um, and the issue tracker, um, the issue tracker, um, there's a skill in writing patch, um, uh, writing the issues. And um, everybody seems to do it a different way. And some people are very, uh, they assume that the person that's testing it knows exactly the code and what the issue is. And of course they don't, it could be anyone that's testing it. So I think it's one of the things that we need to try and improve is with the issues and everybody doing the issues is um, putting as much explanation as possible in there so that those that come along to do the actual um, testing of your issue um, can, can easily get into that issue, understand exactly what screen they should be on, what setup they should have. There's nothing more infuriating than being halfway through doing a, uh, a testing of an issue and then realizing that you needed X, Y, or Z um, and you don't have that on your machine. Um, my machine hasn't got um, PHP 7.4 at the moment. So, um, you know, so um, this is one of the things that I've been highlighting with uh, Tobias and also the uh, security team said that it would be bug squad, so it would be a good idea. So that we ask some questions um, when people are putting issues in and we can then match the issues with the setups and the abilities of those that are doing the testing so that um, we are it should be much more efficient if those that have a specific setup do those specific tests that need that setup and those that have uh, perhaps not such a, a complex setup can then know that they can safely go through and do these tests and they won't be abandoning them halfway through i think we'll get a lot more tests done a lot more uh, tests done correctly um, and it should help everybody um, I put in not just Joomla centric, um, you know, all of these skills that I've been talking about, the you know, Git, GitHub, issue tracking, all of that, they come into other software as well. Um, and other areas of the voluntary sector could benefit from coming along to some of these sessions and saying, hi, I, I don't actually use Joomla at the moment. I use another CMS. Um, and, um, but I would like to learn, um, like to learn about what you guys are doing, but actually I'm here to learn about GitHub, how your tracker works, um, how someone will put in, um, uh, do a, a pull request and do patch testing. Um, do you mind? Not at all. Um, you know, we're all about making software better. Uh, and we can then learn from them and say, you know, what do you like about your ID? Why is that? Why do you, what do you like about your CMS? Why do you think that's, that's, that's uh, so good? Oh, that's something that we need in Joomla. Okay. 
Um, yeah, it's an old saying, give someone a fish and you feed them for the day, teach them to fish and you feed them for a lifetime. And, you know, these skills that we're learning and we're teaching, we're going to be empowering a whole new group of people to help out build Joomla. So, you know, I know sometimes it can be, oh, I've heard that question before, just go and look it up. But someone might not have the confidence to do that. They might need a little bit of hand holding at the beginning. And that can make all the difference to their journey. So those that are out there that have the knowledge, I would I'd really uh, ask you to to put in some time in the Bugs and Fun at Home channels. You know, if you've got an hour to spare uh, for waiting for something to happen, then you can just come into the channel and say, hi, you know, I can do X, Y, or Z. Is anyone interested in learning that? Fantastic. Um, and you will be passing on your skills and your knowledge to someone else who may have more time and can then do those jobs that are needed in Joomla. Um, and you've helped not just for that hour, but for so much more. Um, upskilling, all of that really benefits all of us. Um, I've benefited greatly in the last two months from watching and learning uh, and, and from over a decade of doing Joomla London, you know, you get a newbie comes along, they've, they've only got one test site. Oh, you know, you, you're never going to learn from me. Well, no, actually, you just used a, a component or a module and said how brilliant it is for a use I didn't even know about. So thank you. Now I can now have the knowledge of that and share that with other people, but also use it in my own business. So I, I've learned so much from the people that have come into the chat room and have shared their knowledge. Um, and that has already led to improvement in my own code um, and the stuff that I write um, and, and the things that I'm using now. Um, only the other week I, I learned in production about something that I had dismissed three years ago because I didn't have enough knowledge. And now I have, and I've gone back to it. It's like, wow, this is fantastic. Um, so, you know, that improving and upskilling and learning all the time happens to all of us, whatever level we are. Um, and I think it needs to be encouraged. Um, it improves the extensions that are out there. It will improve the security of Joomla and of our own products. And it should reduce the bugs. Um, and I'm all on reducing the bugs. So I did a little um, um, article in the community magazine. Um, it came out just a couple of weeks ago. Please look it up if you're interested in, in helping out in this sort of thing. Um, it's all about the um, uh, bugs and fun at home and just helping the testing in Joomla um, and just um, trying to encourage people to get into uh, giving some time over to helping improve the CMS. Um, it was all about you know, when, when Joomla 4 is going to be ready. Well, when it's, it's going to be ready, it's going to be out there. When we've tested all the bugs and, and got all those fixed. So come and help. Everybody can help. Um, so I'm looking at the Bugs and Fun at Home as, as a bit like a, a continual professional development, a CPD. So in all organizations, all professions, you have to keep learning. And so I'm, I'm hoping that the Bugs and Fun at Home sessions won't just be for COVID, but they'll continue and evolve. The documentation will get better. And it will be a place that people can feel to, you know, when they've got time to drop in, meet people, learn about the new things that are going on. Now, um, I'll come back onto that, but in about the jugs, but um, keeping people in the loop, letting them understand how Joomla is evolving, uh, browsers are evolving, things that they need to be aware of. Um, so much has happened and changed. And you look back at GDPR, cores, all these different things that are coming into browsers and into legislation. And we need to keep on top of those. And the Bugs and Fun at Home is a great weekly dip in where you can ask those questions. You don't have to wait the month for the next uh, um, jug, you can you can just come online to a community and, and ask those questions. Um, share the best practice. Yeah, that's great. I mean, if you come up with a great way of doing something, a novel idea, then come into the room and, and you know, perhaps we should have a, a little um, uh, section where people have learned new things, but like we have a, a local London jug um, can share and say, you know, I found this extension, I found this thing, uh, and just keep giving those ideas back to a community. Um, 
um, feed back into the jug. So jug leaders, if you belong to a jug, uh, generally user group, and you want to dip into these sessions and see what we've got, see what documentation has just been prepared and finished, that might feed back to your jugs and you can then use that material for your jug. Um, jugs could really play a big part in, in making this a success. There are many parts of the world that haven't really joined in with these sessions yet. So massive uh, spike in the Italian community all coming in, piling in, and that's been great. Um, reached out to Australia uh, and had another guy from Australia joining only two days ago into the CMS release uh, team. Uh, so um, brilliant. Um, and Patrick has been on the Joomla scene for a decade. I have never met until bumped into each other in the bugs and fun at home. Um, so really interesting how we all work in isolation and this could be a real place for a lot of the world community to come in and leave a message and talk and, and to get to know each other. Um, and the jugs can push out about bugs and fun at home. We're gonna be doing it every Saturday. We're looking for 24 hours if we can get enough people to kind of pass that baton on. So you'll know that it's going to be running. You'll know it's something that people can dip into. Um, and if the person who's admining it has just wandered away for a cup of tea, they'll be back in a few minutes. So come along and you know ask members of your jug to perhaps dip in, see what's going on, take something back to your jug. Um, uh, and that should hopefully, I say here, help the embers. There's lots of people that are on their own that have enthusiasm, and if that's not met, and if that's not um, uh, used, it will die out. Um, uh, or could burn out because they're just too busy and, and everything's pushed on them. So the more people that join up with these sorts of sessions um, that are regular, um, the better, because it really should help with the upskilling, with making you realize that actually when you do have a problem and you're on your own as a coder, maybe a small team of two or three, and there isn't someone with that particular skill, there is a place to come and just ask that question. Um, so I'm coming towards wrapping up now. Uh, I can see I've got uh, not that many minutes. Um, CMS release team needs you. We have a new release every six weeks. Um, so it's a regular thing that needs testing. Um, it's absolutely vital to keep the releases smooth, um, to catch the bugs uh, before they hit the wild. Um, and we're trying to improve our methods and, and the way we do things. We have big spreadsheets at the moment that we um, uh, test against. And that's actually, we're seeing if we can write that into a component, which will fit in and give more stats and make sure we've covered more areas. We're always looking for people who English isn't their uh, native language because they will be able to test in more languages and test the language packs and test the multilingual aspects of Joomla, which is a really big thing. So, it, you know, we're looking for more people all the time to help with that six week testing cycle. So, again, you know, message me at my community address um, in the community article. There's all my details. Uh, come on to uh, Ring Central Glip um, and 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 seek me out, and I can certainly uh, find a team for you. Um, let's make next Saturday the biggest yet. Um, so we'll be. I'm sure Patrick will be up for it, uh, and our friends in, in America. So we should be doing from midnight um, UTC on Saturday to midnight again uh, the Sunday morning, uh, if we can find someone on the east coast of America, uh, Central America, to hand it over to. So do come along. Let's make it the biggest yet. Um, we've got the Ring Central Glip uh, Bugs and Fun at Home channel which has become a real friendly place on a Saturday to just pop in, ask questions. Um, it becomes alive on a, on a Saturday, and then, but it filters through the rest of the week with questions being put in and then things being looked at at the weekends. Um, that's my email address there, my community one, which I, I try and make sure I check every, every day. Um, and uh, we've also got, uh, in the chat room, we've got, um, the link to the docs, um, which have all of these resources and all the things that I've been talking about. Um, and it's all listed in that um, community magazine article as well. And um, 
yeah, you are the Joomla community, all the people that are out there listening and watching this. Um, if you're not, you can become part of it. Um, and Bugs and Fun at Home is a place to meet. So if you're totally new to Joomla, just want to learn what it's about, come in and um, find the chat room, say hi. Um, and, um, you know, if you want to help out with something or just, just find out more about Joomla, then do. Um, uh, thank you all for um, those who've uh, supported the Bugs and Fun at Home so far. Uh, Nicola especially for being there early every Saturday morning. Um, the CMS release team that um, have already started to grow. We've added two new members only in the last few days. Um, you know, when a bug gets through, everybody feels bad. But hey, we do catch a lot um, as well. And that's really good. Um, and a lot of people don't hear about that part. Um, so I just want to shout out to the team saying, well done, you're doing fantastic fantastic job um, a lot of them are giving up their time yesterday over this weekend and uh, up until Tuesday when uh, the release of uh, 3.9 comes out and the last two slides are my agent of chaos who as you can see I was doing the talk decided she'd interrupt me and um, thank you Flo for actually allowing me to finish the talk last night um, that's it, Robert. I think I've actually filled up all my time and don't need to do a tap dance. Yeah, sadly. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I what I what I'm seeing here. Yeah, very important thing. Bugs and fun at home and helps with a lot, lot to to bring Joomla forward. And then thanks for for the presentation and and uh, for all the pieces um, uh, you put together and. Um, so I totally agree with with with, with one part, and um, I I think this is really something important that that it's not 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 one way when you give something to Joomla, and it's all, all, always oh for me I learned a lot and and improved my skills and and, and improved my process for my business. Um, so everyone can can get something out of it. It's not just uh, providing something for Joomla. Um, so that's, I think, a really important part. And I totally agree with your point on this. Um, so thanks for the presentation. Um, um, I will come back to you with this tap down thing. Um, but uh, anyway, um, so we're making, I, I, there are no questions. So. Um, about, about your presentation, that means that it's totally complete and everything is set, uh, and nobody has questions. So uh, there are a lot of people next Saturday uh, joining you, um, uh, I think. Um, and we now make a short break, um, five minutes or something. So if people have time, go on Twitter, go on Facebook, go on TikTok.